Michael Gove today unveiled the government's new official definition of nonviolent extremism. It states, extremism is the promotion or advancement of an ideology based on violence, hatred or intolerance that aims to negate or destroy the fundamental rights and freedoms of others, undermine, overturn or replace the UK's system of liberal parliamentary democracy and democratic rights, or intentionally create a permissive environment for others to achieve the results in one or two. Groups that meet this definition will be blocked from receiving government funding and meeting officials. Extremism used to be understood to mean violence to advance your political cause through violence and not through debate. Nonviolent extremism, however, is a nebulous rhetorical flourish. It's hazy, indistinct, open to widely different interpretations, and is dangerous as the basis of legislation. Freedom, rights and responsibilities are not absolutes. Containing freedom in one area enables it in another and vice versa. Freedom for the wolves means death for the lambs, as Isaiah Berlin put it. A 2016 Channel 4 news poll found that half of British Muslims think homosexuality should be illegal. This would appear to meet the criteria as defined by the government of non-violent extremism, as such a view negates the freedoms of others or creates a permissive environment for others to do so. Now, making homosexuality illegal is a view I disagree with, but it would not be desirable or workable to ban half of British Muslims from interaction with the government. We could no longer call Britain a democracy if we did so. In a democracy, how we relate to each other has to be put through a times difficult process of deliberation and debate. Unfortunately, it's not how many of those on the left see things. Today, an influential advocacy group called Hope Not Hate issued a release called State of Hate 2024. Front and centre of the report, however, not fascists who are pushed right to the back, but elected members of parliament. I'm in there, as are my fellow MPs, Miriam Cates, Danny Kruger, Marco Longhi and others. The Conservative media comes under attack. The very mild-mannered Spectator, as well as the Daily Telegraph, are there, as well as GB News, which is mentioned over 60 times. Even the Prime Minister questioning Labour policy is suggested to be evidence of a radical right drift, which is perhaps not surprising, given one of their directors is a Labour peer. Hope Not Hate says that it is non-partisan, that it is anti-fascist, and that they defend, champion and promote democracy and the rule of law, speaking against anti-democratic and authoritarian forces and policies. Under this fake posturing, it receives government funding. The Home Office's counter-extremism unit, in fact, has given them over £100,000 over the last few years. Not only that, but they've received a similar sum from Trust for London. Trust for London manages Church of England Trust's ostensibly of the maintenance of church buildings. It also administers a trust set up for poverty relief with a 10 million grant from the government after the abolition of the Greater London Council. As you see, institutional capture is unfortunately how too much of the left operates. They will take advantage of the good faith of their opponents to smear and silence those with whom they do not agree. It has happened with Hope Not Hate and the rest of the Quangocracy. But Sir Keir Starmer intends to expand. It has happened with the civil service. It has happened with the Church of England. It's even happened to some degree with the armed forces. And unfortunately, it's at risk of happening again with standards of this kind that have been announced today, despite the good intentions that may be behind it. As ever, let me know your thoughts, mailmog at gbnews.com. And I'm joined now by Sean Irish, spokesman at Just Stop Oil, and my panel of former Conservative MP and commentator, Paul Goodman, and GB News' senior political commentator, Nigel Nelson. Now, Sean, we're both a bit worried that we may agree on this definition of extremism, stopping your group, Just Stop Oil, doing things that are legitimate protest. Certainly. Well, it's not surprising that the government have taken this stance. I mean, Tory policy has been written by the Daily Mail and GB News, and now it's come back to bite years. <laughs> you know, it's quite clear what GB News and the Daily Mail have been saying for months and not years, that protest needs to be squashed, that democratic, you know, you cannot express yourself in a democratic matter if it's not the way GB News likes to do it. So this is, you know, it's not surprising. It's just these are upset now that it's come back to get news. And we will defend you on this. It is not right. It should not happen. But also, you've, laid, you've made your bed. You're going to have to lay in it, I think, at this stage. But hopefully, we will see, you know, next election will bring change. But I'm not against your right to protest. Indeed, I've defended it. I am against you gluing yourself to the road because that's causing criminal damage. So there, there is always a balance w within the law, what is legitimate protest and what is illegitimate. It's a question of where you draw the line, surely. 
Certainly, and um, we are going to hold. We were we held ourselves accountable for every action that we take. You know, I've been into court many times. Uh, my partner was just sent to prison today, again without trial, which is happening quite frequently in the UK. Groups like Just Stop Oil and all these other groups are not going to stop what we're doing, no matter what the government says to us. They need to come to the negotiation table. They need to recognise that the people of Britain want change, and saying that extre it's extremists to ask for that change will not stop people from asking for it. Uh, and you must be entitled to argue for your cause, even if other people disagree with it. And, I mean, I've often said to you, you should stand for election and put it to voters to see if they want your policies, which I think are extreme but not extremist, if you follow me in terms of the difference. I think I understand what you mean. Yeah, well, I would say, you know, again, politicians are seeing this change is coming. You know, we are having more and more MPs that are saying they agree with our demands of ending new oil and gas. Although Labour have named on some of their demands, they are still saying that new licences will not be part of their policies going forward. We are seeing that the Tories are going to be thrown out in the next general election whenever Rishi well, decides to have it. We'll see about that. Time will tell. Um, Nigel, I hope not hate coming out and saying that a whole slew of Conservative MPs are being exposed essentially as fascists. That's what underpins them. That's not what it said. Well, it lists them in a, their, their whole cause, is that they're there to expose fascists. Well, what it, what it, what it describes, you are, uh, describes you as is radical right. I don't know if you would actually go along with it, with uh, that description. No, I'm, I'm part of the mainstream of the Conservative Party. Okay. I'm an elected member of Parliament because their whole campaign is implying that people on the right are involved in hate. There is no evidence that members of the Tory party in Parliament are involved with hate. It's well, what, a very extreme view. I mean, what hope not hate? I mean, I don't, don't agree with, with, with uh, a lot of what they say. I don't agree with a lot of their conspiracy theories. Um, they have done some really good work. I mean, that their main focus is to uh, expose the far left, far left extremists, and that's their basic target. What they were arguing was that people like you are taking the mainstream towards the right. Now, I, as I say, I don't back that particular argument, but when you've got an organisation um, that prevented an MP, Rosie Cooper, from being murdered by neo-Nazis, that shows the kind of good work that they have been doing. And, and um, f that went to court and the security services protected uh, Rosie Cooper from that, but it, it's mentioning people like me in the same list as um, uh, people who are neo-Nazis. I mean, that's... Pretty ridiculous, well, it, well, seems to me. It, you're mentioning the same document. I don't well, think that, it's, it's, that they call the neo-Nazis the, the fascist fringe. So they do distinguish between the radical right, which they label you as, and the fascist fringe, which are the neo-Nazis. I think it's very dodgy that a group like this gets government funding, Paul. Look, uh, it's a perfectly um, sensible thing to have organisations that are monitoring far-right activity, far-left activity, Islamist activity. That's all absolutely fine. But I think Hope Not Hate are just not doing themselves any favours or doing what they're meant to do any favours if they start dragging in and seeking to delegitimise views that are within the democratic mainstream, even if you disagree with them, like you or even, say, Nigel Farage, and putting them in the same bracket as neo-Nazis. It doesn't do the debate any good, and it's actually devaluing the contribution they themselves could and, make. And saying that we're blurring the lines between the radical right and fascists, which well, seems to be an extraordinary view. They, they are say. blurring the lines between what is legitimate to criticise it, in my view, uh, and what's part of the mainstream, even if you don't like it. And to come back to Michael Gove's definition of this morning, mm. does that stop the government interacting with people who have legitimate views? That, that is to say, would it be legitimate mm. to want the caliphate to take place in the UK if you could persuade British people to vote for it? It's very important to go back to the origins of all this. I mean, this debate about extremism isn't new. And the government for years has had this debate over another group that wasn't named today, the Muslim Council of Britain. You know, do you give it a platform? Do you um, provide it with government patronage? Do you, do you fund it? They've been having that debate. This just doesn't apply to Just Stop Oil at all, because the government's never patronised it, the government's never given it money, and the government's never given it a platform. So I feel myself that the government's got a bit of explaining to do. Uh, you know, I understand 
not wanting to engage or fund groups that seek to overthrow parliamentary democracy. When you get onto part one of the definition, which is all about ideas and values, that seems to me a muddle, and a, I'm, I'm not quite clear what the government's thinking of here. Because, Nigel, we're not all obliged to have the same values, are we? No, that's, that's the point. I mean, and I'm quite pleased to see from the old prevent de definition um, the idea about undermining British values disappearing, simply because it's so vague. I'm in favour of British values, but it, they mean different things to different people. This is certainly more specific, but I think Paul's right. It rather depends how it's actually exercised, because it's going to be a subjective uh, judgment on groups, not an objective one. Um, and the, uh, Michael Gove oddly mentioned things like patriotic alternative, a neo-Nazi well, group, which obviously doesn't get well, government what, funding. What worries me is that when I was in the Cabinet Office, we heard that a near sort of semi-terrorist supporting group had gone into the Home Office. So we drew up regulations to try and stop groups like that going into the government. Then we discovered that the civil service had interpreted this to stop an expert on whatever field he was in who didn't like Brexit going in. And this is the problem. The rules go from something perfectly sensible, uh, and, and this one is, I think, where you're concerned, to stopping people having a legitimate cause. Well, I think this is very much the point, and this is why I would say to you, Jacob, like, if this is a concern you have, oddly enough, we do share it. Uh, but will you support a call for citizens' assembly so things like this cannot happen, MPs cannot go way past the mark and do ridiculous things like this uh, without ratification by the people? They do that through Parliament, because the great citizens' assembly is the House of Commons. It's signed in um, today. We asked Hope Not Hate to appear tonight, but they refused and have not given a statement either. We also asked Trust for London for clarification on its funding of Hope Not Hate but did not receive a response. Later, I'll be getting to the bottom of whether it was right for the Speaker not to choose Diane Abbott to speak yesterday at Prime Minister's questions, and I'll be...